Welcome to Citizen Concerned, where we remind you to beware of the comrades. Imagine a world in which people know their strengths and weaknesses. A world where people comfortably and confidently acknowledge that they don't know what they're talking about and they don't know what they're doing. That is a story of people who are humble. Instead of taking control of state-owned companies and planting their comrades in high-level positions they are neither qualified for nor experienced to take, they rather say, I like you and I will look out for you. But here, yeah, you do not qualify and you will mess up. Instead of saying, I'm black and majority of us are black, so most positions should be held by black people, we say, yes. Since the country is majority black, most black people should be in higher positions, role of control and authority, but they must be equipped, qualified or experienced enough to occupy those positions. Upon gaining independence, Botswana, like many African countries, had a black population that had been excluded from positions of authority. The newly elected President Sarezze was a prime example of what it is to be a leader of a country. His decisions helped make Botswana one of the best African countries of that era, if not the best. He understood that merit is what matters most. Yes, black people were excluded before. Yes, they were not equipped before. And no, he was not content with that status quo. The decision made by several African leaders to quickly remove all white people from positions that they occupied while playing the role of the oppressor may seem great short term, but it's destructive long term. It results in we black people looking like we cannot govern ourselves or perform duties that the previous occupiers of those roles were performing. And it results in the suffering of citizens in our African countries. The truth is we are capable. We are gifted. We can run these countries successfully. We too can manage countries successfully. We too can use a nation's resources just as well as those who did it before us. But we must be taught and we must be humble enough to be taught. President Sareza wanted black people to also take positions of government, play roles in the economy, but he made sure that black people would get equipped first before they are thrown into positions of authority. Not only to keep them and their dignity safe, but ultimately to keep the country safe. Many people were talking just like the lunatics we have in South Africa right now, demanding black representations and BEE this and BEE that not considering that the black people who might prematurely be forced into such positions might not be ready, qualified or even suitable for the positions. He had a long-term plan for the success of Botswana and he made decisions that would lead to that success no matter how unpopular those decisions were. President Sareza of Botswana was a unique leader at that time because unlike many of the African leaders like Julius Nyerere and Kwame Nkrumah, he embraced human rights, making sure that race was not at the forefront of his politics. He embraced free markets as well as low taxes to encourage investments and curb corruption and tax evasion. Unlike South Africa, which had more infrastructure than any African country upon independence, President Sareza inherited a country that had one paved road. One. That paved road was only 12 kilometers long. Imagine. The infrastructure was very backward. Upon independence, Botswana was third poorest in the world and had only 22 university graduates and 100 high school graduates. How many universities, university and high school graduates did South Africa have in 1994? Instead of kicking out all white people who were working in government departments, he allowed them to stay because he understood that his own people were not ready to start taking charge of these systems yet. In a non-racial country, more and more black people will be absorbed into the relevant positions as long as they are qualified. Mining companies were encouraged by the government to search for more mineral deposits. 
President Sarayat says government played a massive role there and sought the assistance of international advisors and consultants. Why? Because they have more experience. Their countries had done it all before. No need to reinvent the wheel. Simply ask the people that invented the wheel for assistance, right? That speaks to humility. Unfortunately, many of our leaders confuse humility for foolishness, while really pride is foolishness. Instead of focusing on collaborating with people of any race and from any country who have what it takes to help South Africa be the best it can be, our politicians focus rather on racial exclusion and yet make it seem like South Africa is a beacon for racial equality, the rainbow nation. South Africa is unfortunately very racist and it's the black government that is most racial towards coloreds, Indians and whites. And still, they don't even benefit the majority of black people. Here's a fascinating thing that I didn't know. Between 1960 and 1980, Botswana had the fastest growing economy in the world. The government managed to make a lot of money from the mining industry because they negotiated for the nation and its people. After the government of Botswana made lots of money through the mining industry, they didn't give themselves motorcades and mansions and share the money with other comrades. No, they used the output from the country's resources to input it back into the country. They invested heavily in education and infrastructure. A country with more educated people and more infrastructure also means more economic growth and more jobs. President Sarez's interventions into the meat market allowed for the protection of Botswana's farmers and they secured deals with the European Union, allowing them to sell meat at prices higher than anywhere else on earth. This is a man with common sense and he was not alone. Kitumile Masire was the next president and he continued with this wisdom. After President Masire came President Festus Mohai. These are people that valued education, economic prosperity and understood that economic prosperity went hand in hand with citizens that are well equipped and empowered to provide values to others and to themselves. Equipped and empowered to vote. Unfortunately, we as South Africans have not been equipped to vote. We voted for President Jacob Zuma, an uneducated man who knows nothing about the economy. Why did we vote for him? We voted for President Cyril Ramaphosa, who is a wolf that snuck his way into becoming a billionaire simply because he was among the people behind the creating and crafting of the BEE laws. The only reason I can find for voting for these two men is ignorant citizens vote for rubbish politicians. We took over and focused on replacing competence with color. We embarked on a spree to rename streets and buildings, putting black names on things that we did not build. Botswana actually built what it names. We have allowed infrastructure to decay, but hey, at least it has a black name. <laughs> Social justice warriors have no place in a country that seeks equality and prosperity. They definitely have no place in politics. In government, we need people that embrace technology, education, and merit. The ANC and the EFF are people who have no clue what it takes to make a country function like a well-oiled machine, or what it takes to make a country prosper for years and years, and they don't seem humble enough to learn from those who do know. They simply want us to believe that Britain, America and all of the West are to blame for our problems. They want us to believe that the heroes are the communist countries. Botswana is an example of a country that did not adopt communist ideals that Kwame Nkrumah and Julius Nyerere and many other African countries adopted. I practiced or continued the practice of sound and stable macroeconomic planning and prudent financial management. We pursued market-oriented policies and also we felt investor-friendly policies as a result of which we were able to achieve an average growth rate of 6% during the 10 years of my presidency. 
That was lower than what had been the case previously. Many African countries chose to copy communist Russia and China, and the majority of them have nothing to show for it. The communist countries that they were copying ended up realizing that this communism thing is just not working. And what did they do? Russia learned from the West and China learned from Singapore. And since Singapore learned from the West, in essence, China also learned from the West. Yet, as Africans, we still have leaders holding on to communism. Communism that those that they learned it from have dumped due to its failings. Does that even make sense? With all this knowledge, the EFF and MK parties want us to be communist. They want South Africa to get guidance from the actions of communist China and Russia, not the current free market westernized capitalist China and Russia. Nope. That old failed China and Russia. Why? Because of white monopoly capital. All white people, South African or foreign, who are benefiting unfairly from South Africa and her resources do so because our politicians are benefiting. It's simple. The Botswana government ensured that the output from their mines benefit the people and not the politicians. This is not a matter of white monopoly capital. It's a matter of who is the government, who is in charge, who is making the policies. Is it corrupt people like the ANC, EFF and MK? Or is it patriotic people like President Serete of Botswana? Don't be lied to and made to believe that you are suffering because it's white people's fault. Do you remember how the communists behaved? Whatever was wrong with the people, with the citizens, with the leadership was because of the bourgeoisie, was because of the middle class. Today, don't be lied to and made to believe that you are suffering simply because it's white people's fault. Ask them the questions. Where are they when these people are stealing? What are they doing about the theft of these white people who are stealing? Because if they know about it, are they not benefiting from it? Surely they should have done something from it if they were not benefiting from it, right? Don't vote for the ANC because it's corrupt, it's incompetent, and it has caused racial division, not even to the benefit of the black majority. Don't vote for EFF or MK because they cause even more division and they definitely don't know what they're doing. That's why they want to implement policies that have been proven to destroy nations over and over and over again. Adam Smith, author of The Wealth of Nations and the Father of Modern Economics said, You will make better decisions once you begin thinking long term rather than short term. And President Sreze certainly thought long term. As you prepare to cast your vote, please think long term. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, share and please subscribe. I'm Katlaro. Until next time, beware of the comrades.